my beautiful soul tribe, my beautiful friends who like pie. <laughs> I loved all the pie comments. I have to ask though, I saw in a show once somebody eats sweet potato pie and I imagined it was like pumpkin pie. Is it like pumpkin pie? Is it sweet or is it more like a vegetable? <laughs> I want to know. Anyway, I almost didn't come do this reading because it's so late in the day. Um, I had to do muggle things today. I went to the dentist. Um, I was messaging my friend while I was there because she's part of the soul tribe. Um, I have a really hard time going to the dentist because I have childhood trauma when it comes to the dentist and specifically my father. And so anytime I go to the dentist, it's it's like it's a struggle for me um, because I have, you know, memories that come back from when I was a kid and I think about, I think about it anyway. Um, so yeah, I went to the dentist today, which was not lovely. <laughs> I survived though. I did it. And then I went and bought myself a tarot deck as, you know, <laughs> to pat myself on the back. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you guys, I was having like, I was having weird dreams these past couple days and I, I actually, it's so helpful to talk to someone about your dreams because they can ask you questions that make you realize something you didn't think of. So I was having this dream that I was on a boat that was like tipping and it was almost tipping. It was a big boat, not like a yacht, but more like a cruise ship or a ferry. And it was tipping, like violently tipping. And in my dream, I remember, I forget my dreams almost instantly. But I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like this boat is like going this way and that way. And I don't know what's going on. So I'm just going to jump. And it didn't occur to me till I told my friend about this dream. And she said, sounds like you're sick of the journey. And it, it brought back a memory of my dream almost instantly that the ship was almost ashore. Like it was like, it was, it was almost at the dock. It was like, you could see the beach. And I was like, nope, I've had enough, but I'm jumping ship. <laughs> so she, you know, she gave me a really interesting outlook on that dream, which was, you know, the journey feels the hardest when you're close, closest to reaching fulfillment or something good happening or anyway, it just gave me an interesting outlook on it, but I've been having weird dreams since. Um, but anyway, today I just wanted to tell you guys <laughs> today, I decided to say out loud how I was feeling to my partner about my life and I mentioned some of the things I want to do. My body is my best friend and I always know what it wants. That's your affirmation. <laughs> um, but I actually spoke out loud the things that I want to do in the next few months. And, you know, I actually said out loud, like, I feel like something is stagnant in my life and I just want, I want to start being more independent. I want to start going after these things that I've been manifesting, you know, um, I want to travel, you know, anyway. And then we had that conversation and I'm like such a people pleaser and I internalize everything and I try not to do that because I felt like, I felt like maybe he was threatened by this conversation we were having or he was upset about it. He wasn't any of those things. But I'm like such an overthinker that I started projecting my own fear, thinking, oh, maybe he's mad that I want to do that. Maybe he doesn't think I should. And it was just what was going on in front of, in, in me. Um, and I realized that that's not how he feels. And I shouldn't just, it's, it's interesting how our own perception of things um, can sometimes be off, you know? Anyway, so after I told him this, I went outside. And I, I had been asking the universe for a sign. And yesterday I was like, I was looking at the blue jays on my deck. Cause I'm like, I have bird friends, Disney princess. <laughs> and I was thinking, man, it would be nice if one of you blue jays left me a nice blue feather. <laughs> anyway, I got something. I, I have this deck that talks about asking for a sign 
and ask for a rainbow. Maybe you'll get two. Maybe you'll get a double rainbow. Anyway, I asked for a blue jay feather and I got something much more magical. I walked out this morning. I know the buildup. The buildup is insane for nothing. That's it's not that exciting. So after this conversation, I walked outside. I had asked for a sign from my guides last night. And there was a cardinal feather on my deck. And I've only ever seen a cardinal three times in my life. They're not common where I am. And if they are, they stay very well hidden. There was one time where I could hear a cardinal or I didn't know what the bird was. And I looked it up and it was a cardinal. And then a few weeks ago, I thought I saw one on my deck, but it flew away almost instantly. And then I overthought it. But this was a cardinal feather and cardinal feathers can be a sign from passed on loved ones. So right away I thought of my grandmother. And then like later in the day, I saw two eagles circling, which was also interesting. Anyway, my point is to (laughs) pay, pay attention to the signs and synchronicities you're getting. Pay attention to the dreams. Pay attention to the numbers you're seeing. Um, Because it all means something. Um, And the more you, the more you follow that language of the universe, the more the universe talks back to you. And I know that sounds, (laughs) but it's magical. Um, Anyway, we're going to read this chapter, my friends. Um, I might open my curtain a little. I don't know. It feels pretty dark in here. Now, this chapter is a little long. So what I wanted to do was I just wanted to get a few cards of advice on the subject of the chapter, and then we'll read the chapter, and then that'll be that. (laughs) So I was going to get this love, Psychic Tarot for the Heart, the oracle deck that I sometimes use that kind of, it kind of works as a tarot deck, but it's missing all the court cards, so, but we're going to ask the question. How to get over someone, the ultimate guide to releasing attachments, reinventing yourself, and opening your life to new love. So before we do that, I just wanted to see what comes out of this deck for advice for you. And then we'll read that chapter. I hope you guys had a lovely weekend. I did take the day off yesterday. (coughs) And I carved pumpkins with my kids. And I played some Mario Kart with one of my kids. Watched a show with another one of my kids. (laughs) Had a nap. (laughs) So let's see what you need to hear today, my soul tribe, for this one. We have Emperor Energy on the bottom. Interesting. Interesting. So what do you need to hear about releasing attachments and moving forward and reinventing yourself? We have change your focus. Okay. I'm just going to get one more. I don't know why. And we have dreams coming true and we have blossom. So blossom is judgment energy. And I believe this is pentacles. But let me just look at this. Nope, it's nope, 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 nope. It's emotions. So we have five of cups, change your focus. And we have nine of cups, dreams coming true. And we have blossom, which is judgment energy. And judgment can be about releasing. So change your focus, disappointment, loss, shift, appreciate. Some disappointment and sadness are inevitable. How you deal with it determines the quality of your life. It may be that you've recently experienced a loss, perhaps the end of a friendship or a failed romance. Maybe your family isn't providing the support you need, or you regret the decisions you've made. Any number of situations can cause unhappiness. When relationships don't turn out the way you expected, it's natural to feel upset and hurt. However, it's not healthy to remain in that state I just wanted to make sure that wasn't an affirmation for too long. When this card appears, it's time to put those sorrows behind you and shift your focus to what is good and positive in your life. 
Appreciate the people who love you and your ability to give love to others. Take Take stock of what brings you joy. Taking charge of your own happiness is key here. And remember, we had the Emperor card on the bottom. Taking charge, taking action. Taking, ch oh, I already read that. Focus on what you have and are thankful for and attract more of the same. And then we have nine. And I actually, there's another card I want to look up for you. Contentment, receive, gratitude, indulgence. This is a card of contentment and wishes being fulfilled. It suggests that you're about to enter a time of peace, joy, and satisfaction. Be clear about what you want your relationships to look like because your wishes may be granted soon. Remember to be open to receiving all that the universe is sending your way and express gratitude when your dreams come true. Then sit back and enjoy. This card is also about feeling good. This card is also about feeling good both emotionally and physically. Engage in activities that bring you pleasure. Take a friend to an upscale restaurant, share a luxurious bubble bath with your partner, or enjoy an ice cream cone with a child. Activities that make you feel happy will tell the universe to send you more joyful abundance. This will aid in your wish fulfillment, so go ahead and indulge yourself. And then we have judgment. And before I read that, I need to open the window. I don't even feel like that made it any brighter. I guess the sun is already setting here. Winter is coming. So we have blossom, awaken, transform, stretch, possibilities, direction, and growth. Matters of the heart are much like flowers. In the bud stage, the relationship is in a state of potential. It requires loving care and attention to help it grow, develop, and bloom. The people involved in the relationship must be willing to trust and open themselves to each other. With the proper amount of nurturing, the relationship will blossom and bring beauty to the lives of those involved. It's time for you to nurture the potential of your relationships. New life and new love are waiting for you. Interesting. You only have to all you have to do is reach out and take hold. Seize the energies of your of renewal that surround you now and allow yourself to blossom like a beautiful flower. Awaken to the possibilities regarding desires of the heart. A blossom follows the sun because its warmth and light nurture the sun and infuse it with energy. The sun even provides some of the nutrients needed by the blossom. What is the sun in your own life? What nurtures you and helps you thrive? Do your relationships provide what you need? If not, it may be time to transform your life and grow in a new direction. You're in a period of growth regarding affairs of the heart. Stretch yourself and your ideas of what you believe is possible and know, in fact, that all things are possible if you only follow your son. Beautiful. So the other one that I was seeing that I wanted to mention is that I saw the card. No, that's not the card I saw. Hang on. Yeah, I saw the card. I saw the devil card when I was when I was shuffling. So I want to read it to you just in case somebody needs to hear it because I again, I took a mental note of it for a reason. Fear and doubt often prevent a relationship from flowering or from manifesting. In matters of the heart, they can restrict and confine. They prevent you from opening to the joy and love that's waiting for you. A fearful heart closes in upon itself and sees only negativity and doubt. Your fears can even make you question your own value, causing you to wonder whether you're worthy of being loved or if you'll ever find love. These thoughts, if not controlled, will manifest more of the same, continuing in a never-ending and destructive cycle. It's time to take action. To master your fears, you must first identify them. What fears about love have you allowed yourself to believe? Are you concerned about being unlovable? Are you uneasy about giving up your freedom in order to be in a relationship? Do you find it too difficult to speak up about your needs and ask that they be met? Sit quietly and uncover what might be holding you back. By the very act of facing your fears, 
You will recognize them for the deceptions that they are, and you will discover the power to master and and eliminate them. The absence of fear is unconditional love. Please take some time to look at your fears and doubts so that you can release them. This will free you to manifest joyful and loving relationships. Know that you can have the relationship you desire. Act now to release your fears and open your heart. So I felt the need to read that. And now, even though it's dark, I'm going to read you this book. So let's go to that part. Stop. Pause. All right. So let's read this. Heartbreak is a hard thing, but it's not a forever thing. And you will experience a disproportionate amount of it when you're young, though of course it can hit us just as hard at any phase of life. While you're dating, you're most likely moving from relationship to relationship, working on finding the person with whom you'll stay long term. You'll have to cope with not just one, but often a string of losses and heartbreaks. The repetitiveness can begin to create a learned helplessness. It seems like your heart always gets broken. You never find the right person and nobody is quite good enough for you. This is just a temporary thing. Chances are you will spend the rest of your life with someone whom you are happily coupled. You are not meant to be stuck in this back and forth. You are not designated to forge a beautiful connection with someone and then have it severed. Anyway, (laughs) are we talking about soul contracts? (laughs) You are not supposed to build foundations and then have someone crack them in half. This is why it feels so wrong, so foreign, foreign and so awful. This is not how you're supposed to experience life and it won't be how you experience life for the majority of your life. Right now, the pain is making you feel... Like just because someone will be out of your life forever, that the hurt will last forever too. But all you can see is what you've lost. You have yet to see what you're going to gain. What is there to learn from heartbreak? As it turns out, a lot. Right now, life is offering you a second chance. It's telling you that the person you're hung up on is not the person you should be spending every day of your life with. Your life partner is someone who shapes you irrevocably. Their influence in your life will do a great deal in making you who you become. Is the person you are mourning the kind of person you want to be? Would you want to have kids with them? If the answer is in any way no, then you probably don't want to be with that person. In a few years, you'll look at them and want to fall to your knees with gratitude that you were rerouted. Not that you feel that way right now. Right now, you are so focused on what you think you have lost that you're not realizing the fertile ground that is right in front of you. The earth shifts when our heart breaks. When we are forced out of, com- out of comfort, we transform. Right now, you have a choice. You can put all of your energy into throwing a hissing, hissy fit about not getting what you want, or you can take all of the energy that you were previously spending loving, caring, caring, oh my gosh, hang on. <clears throat> or you can take, where was I? All of the energy that you were previously spending loving, caring, worrying, spending time with and thinking about this person and you can put it into yourself. Do you know what you can do when your energy is wholly your own? Anything, everything. You can start a side hustle and work until it becomes your main gig. (laughs) And by this time next year, you could be self-employed doing what you love to do every day. Love it. You can take a trip to St. Tropez and sit on the beach alone. You can spend your nights reading and retaining knowledge that will literally change the entire quality of your life for decades to come. You can spend the money you are wasting on drinks and food and accommodations and start paying off your debts so that you have fewer responsibilities and more freedom. You can become exactly who you want to be and are meant to be. You have the rest of your life to be in love. You have right now to change yourself. You're mourning the loss of a potential future, but it was just that, a potential. It is normal and healthy to grieve the loss of someone with whom you have a deep or intimate relationship. But when it com- when it becomes obsessive to the point of being devastated and completely incapable of moving on, 
It is no longer the person you are mourning. It is an idea that you had about your future life. When you break up with someone and mourn the loss of their presence in your life, it's normal to feel lonely, for emotions to come in waves, to cry, to want to avoid them, or start over, or take some time for yourself. But when you break up with someone on whom you were in some way relying on to give you a sense of certainty, direction, or security for the future, the reaction will be much more manic. You'll be obsessive, convinced that it's not the end, desperately looking for signs, doing anything to make them believe you were still meant to be together. That kind of reaction, can I just say, like, some of this stuff goes against what I believe in, so... I'm having a hard time because some of the things about soul connections that I know, um, it's not that it's just different, you know? Um, anyway, but if you are to the point of obsessing, I always say this in my love readings, like if you feel like you can't live without this person, then that shows you need to work on yourself and your own self love, because you should be okay on your own with or without a soul tie. Anyway, I just wanted to say that I felt the need to say it. Anyway, the kind of reaction, that kind of reaction is not the reaction of someone who has loved and lost a person they care about. That is the kind of reaction of someone who has lost a feeling of safety about the future and will go to any length to get it back, even if just believing in their minds that it's not over. In that, you are giving yourself that feeling again. Here's a litmus test for you. What was going on in your life when you first got together with that person? Before you were in this relationship, did you know where your life was going? Were you confident in who you were, what you wanted, and how you were planning to proceed with the next few years of your life? Were you at all worried, stressed, or anxious that you hadn't found the relationship by the right time, or that you'd hit some milestone and be alone? Were you feeling lost in your career, stressed out about money, or tense about your family? The circumstances that existed when the relationship began can tell you much about the relationship itself. This is why people preach from the gospel of love yourself first. That's what I was just talking about. So often, when two people are happy, well-adjusted, and pursuing their own individual goals get together, the relationship lasts. When two people who need self-work get together, they use one another as a band-aid, and then it falls apart because ultimately they realize another person is not the solution, and that's why I talk so much about healing yourself. If you are anxious about the future, you need to be the one to make the plan. If you want, if you feel unsure about what you want, you need to sit down and brainstorm until you come up with ideas. If you don't know who you are, you need to do some soul searching. If you feel unfulfilled, you need to work somewhere new. If you feel stressed, you need to manage your time, money, or relationships better. This is what you needed to do then, and this is what you were getting a chance to do now. You're not going to forget about this person. You're going to have to get distracted. Forgetting about someone is impossible. The more you try not to think about them, the more you will. Carrying on with your days like nothing has changed is not what's going is not what it's is not what it's going to take to move on with your life. The normal that you once knew is gone. If you keep trying to live As though this person is still around, you will be orbiting around empty spaces. It will be impossible not to think of them and mourn for them constantly. You will sit in the room you used to sit in together and cry. You'll visit the same store you used to shop together in and feel defeated. You'll see friends you used to hang out with and sense embarrassment in a very public, because in a very public way you failed. You need to get up, you need to start over, and you need to begin anew. You need new places, people, and routines. You need new adventures and goals and plans. This is how you get over anything. To fill your life with so many powerful, world-altering things that slowly, over time, you begin to think about them less and less. Not because you're trying to, but because you have so many other things to think about now. You have so many places to go, things to hope for, and passions to keep your mind consumed. As time goes on, 
You'll think about that person less and less and less. Not because you magically stopped caring about them, but because you started filling your life with things you cared about more. That right there is the magic of heartbreak. It forces you to be a different person. Unless you want to mourn forever, you have to change. And if you do it right, you'll work on becoming the person you always wanted to be. You'll look back on this moment as the pinnacle, the turning point, the unanswered prayer that was the answer itself. It will be the greatest thing that ever happened to you because instead of a lukewarm relationship that wasn't working anyway, you got the life of your dreams and you were the one who gave it. We're going to keep reading. How do you know when someone is actually right for you? The tricky things about relationships is they almost always never end with certainty. It's not obvious that you should or shouldn't be with this person. For every issue that you have, you could list off all of their redeeming qualities. For every argument, you could rattle off all the great times you had together, all the signs and signals and ways you're positive that you're meant to be. The opposite of knowing someone is right for you isn't being sure someone is wrong for you. The opposite of knowing someone is right for you is being overwhelmingly uncertain. When someone is clearly and overwhelmingly wrong for you, the relationship won't get that far. You won't be able to develop and foster any kind of significant connection. You'd realize that you are fundamentally incompatible long before you could form any kind of attachment. This is not how heartbreak happens. This is not the product of being mismatched with someone who is fundamentally wrong. It is being matched with someone who in many ways could be right, but raises many doubts. Realizing that someone is wrong for you happens in tiny, ge tiny gestures. It is not posting a lot of photos online because somewhere deep down, you know the relationship isn't going to last. It's avoiding introducing them to your parents because you know they aren't going to react as well as you'd hope. It's thinking to yourself in quiet moments, but what if there's something else? It's daydreaming about the possibilities that life could hold if you weren't with that person. It's going back and forth wondering if this person you could spend your life if this is a person you could spend your life with rather than just being in the moment each day and actually spending your life with them. Heartbreak doesn't happen with the people who are wholly wrong for you. You aren't able to get close enough to let it hurt. It happens with the people who are just right enough to make you hope, but just wrong enough to prevent you from getting closer or making it official. <clears throat> That's why you don't have to watch out for the people you reject. You, as much as you do the people who leave you hanging, the people who keep wanting to see you without making a commitment, the people who say it's just not the right time or that they aren't looking for anything serious. The truth is, is that nobody is looking for anything serious until someone comes along who they seriously love. It is never the right time until it is the right person. The opposite of just knowing someone is right for you isn't just knowing they're wrong for you. It's doubt. Being uncertain means you know the answer. You are just too attached to admit it. How do you let go when you can't stop thinking about someone? In the wake of your breakup, everyone around you is going to be counseling you to just let go of the past, move on, and start anew. They'll tell you to go out drinking, start dating, and revel in your newfound freedom. This will be annoying at best and absolutely, absolutely maddening at worst. There's nothing more frustrating than someone who seems to believe that a shot of tequila and a random Saturday hookup will be a salve. Is that how you say it? Salve? For the life-shattering heartbreak you're experiencing right now, the future you thought it would be has changed. The present as you're used to has too. You do not need any more uncertainties right now. You do not need to try and force yourself into a new life when you're already panicked about what's going to happen next. The harder you try and let go and move on, the more your brain is going to latch onto reasons why you think about it more, try again, or keep hoping. The thing about letting go is that it's less an active choice as it is accepting that something is already gone. It's not really that you actually dismiss someone from your life. It's that you come to terms with the fact that they're already gone. In that, you can find a semblance of peace. You aren't toying with whether or not you should unclasp your hand and release something. You only have to realize that you're already living without this person, 
They're already gone. You have essentially already let go. People feel uncertainty because it's the unknown, but uncertainty is also an incredible blessing because it means for the first time you are detached from what has happened in the past and what you think you want to happen in the future. When you are uncertain, you are open to making choices that otherwise wouldn't have been possible because you were too comfortable with what you were used to. Uncertainty is a breeding ground for life's great moments and most epic possibilities. Most people hang on to what they've known and what they think they want because they are tr too afraid of feeling the discomfort of not knowing. People who are willing to brave that tension are the ones who truly free themselves. The ground rules for moving on from a relationship. When you're hurt and uncomfortable and deaf and desperately wanting to retrace your, your steps, figure out what went wrong, or even try and mend things again, you're going to be in a place where you're not thinking clearly. Call it a crime of passion, but people are most apt to completely embarrass themselves and make detri detrimental decisions for, the, for their long-term well-being when they're most in emotional pain. That's why if you're going through a split, you should follow these guidelines. Follow a no-contact policy, unless the relationship wasn't that serious and you're comfortable being friends again. Exes don't hang out alone, go for drinks, or talk to each other regularly, and they certainly don't hook up. It's so dark here. Find a trustworthy friend with whom you can vent and do so privately. Number three, if you can't help but feel the urge to check in on them, to view their photos, or see what they're doing online, unfriend them or block them. If you feel bad for doing that, explain kindly that it's a step for you to gain closure and to help you to move on, and that you wish them well. Number four, switch up your routine. You cannot hang out with the same people, visit the same places, or otherwise continue, continue to circle in orbit around them and not expect to miss them every minute of the day. When you go through a breakup, your whole life changes. That's the magic of it. Five, don't do anything permanent. Don't do anything you cannot undo in a matter of days. Six, consider casually dating again. After you've taken some time for yourself, consider getting back in the game. No, it's not fair to enter a new relationship hung up on someone else. But if you are never really going to forget your old... But if you are never really going to forget your old relationship until you have a new one to take its place and remind you that everything happens for a reason. I have to say some of these things I don't, I agree with a lot of it, but there's some of them that I myself don't agree with. And that's just how I am. Anyway, seven, write down everything you wanted and needed this person to be for you. Most likely, you're scared because without them, your future could be lonely, financially harder, or you might just feel like a total screw up. Those are all issues that you need to work on mending for yourself. Like, can I just say something that I don't agree with, which is get out there and distract yourself. Like I do love readings where I, where I've learned through healing that distraction can just be a delay in really healing yourself. So like, I understand what this person is saying about distract yourself, fill your, fill your days with things that make you happy and all of that. Yeah, great, good. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point where you actually do have to self-reflect and take the time to be quiet and still and grieve and heal and again, reflect. Um, you know, some of the stuff that this is saying I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Some of the stuff that this is saying is like how people get into karmic situations with karmics. Like consider casually dating again after a breakup. That's distraction. Um, I mean, it does say take the time to heal, but healing takes a long time. And again, I'm not telling you that you have to agree or disagree with any of this, but I, I, I'm sitting here reading these and part of me for some of them is like my intuition is like no I don't like I see the person's point but I also don't agree with I, I don't necessarily agree with all of it <clears throat> um 
I agree with a lot of it. I will say I agree with a lot of it, but some of the things, um, yeah, distractions are good, but you can distract yourself right into being oblivious about the things you need to work on. You know, this consider casually dating again. That can be a band-aid as well. Anyway, I just, I needed to say it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay that if you agree with them, um, I just really needed to say that. Let's go to the next part. It's so dark. Eight, remember that you were all losing. Remember that all you were losing is one idea you had about what your future might have been. You're now free to start dreaming of a new one. Again, some of this stuff too, if you're highly spiritual might contradict your spiritual beliefs like it is with me um, a little bit, you know? Anyway, how future self-work can help you heal. Future self-work is a process of visualizing yourself years down the line. When you sit down to do it, make sure you're in a quiet and calm place and you have a pen and paper handy. Close your eyes and visualize the highest and best version of your future self. It doesn't matter what age you are. Know that it is common to first see scary things, like being dead or hurt or in pain when you're older. And know that it is just your fear of what could happen that you're seeing. Once that subsides, you can finally see what you're going to be like in the future. Start asking that person questions and see what they say in your mind. Know that this is all an ent entirely a projection of who you already are, and where you already know you're meant to be heading. It's just a process of making you aware of that fact. Often visualize yourself happy and single or happy and coupled with someone new in the future is just what you need to let go of someone. Your future self could also advise on what to do in the moment or whether or not you really need to let this relationship go. You are basically tapping into the counsel of the highest and wisest part of yourself. As long as you write down, as long as what you write down feels real, true, and helpful, you should trust it. That's my point. For those of you who are highly spiritual and are dealing with like a very strong soul connection, some of this stuff is not going to apply, you know? Um... Anyway, I just wanted to say that. I can't believe how dark it is. I'm sorry it's so dark. I can't control the daylight, but... <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, maybe... Do you, do you guys know how... Listen, I've been so hesitant to read this chapter, and I didn't know why, and I think it's because I knew that I might not spiritually align with some of the things in this chapter. I didn't reread it first. But like I said, some of the things that are being said, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, and we're all entitled to our own opinions. That's why I'm saying it's just my opinion. I'm not saying that this writer is wrong. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not saying that that person's wrong or or I'm wrong. It's just we all have different beliefs. Um, and, you know, I see it in love readings when somebody tries to distract themselves from doing the inner work. They just stay on a repetitive cycle of self-sabotage. Like, instead of taking the time to grieve and mourn a relationship, they just jump right into another one. They casually online date and then repeat a cycle, and then they meet someone else, and repeat a cycle, and it's just a continuous cycle. Um, anyway, I just, I had to say it. <laughs> All right, and I feel like we already know who our future, like, we already know about our higher self and our future self. <laughs> anyway, that was it. That was the end of the chapter. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I was sitting there reading it, and again, it's 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 okay if you don't agree with me. It's okay that me and that writer don't agree with each other. Um, but as someone on like a highly spiritual journey, very tapped into my intuition and my beliefs, some of that stuff I didn't necessarily agree with. Starting a business? Yeah, heck yeah. Learning about yourself, healing shadows, all of that stuff? Yeah. But the distraction part and a few other parts... Um, Anyway, 
that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> They're going to take me away. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to mention that because, like I said, as I was reading it, I was wondering why for the past few days I've been in avoidance about that chapter. And it's like my higher self, my future self knew there's going to be a few things in there you don't necessarily agree with. And again, that's fine if you believe in those things. We're humans. We're all different. We believe in different things. I believe in, you know, feather messages and eagles and things like that. Not everybody does. And that's okay. I believe in soul connections. I believe in I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> anyway, um, as I'm grabbing like a soul connection deck, interesting. Not for you guys. I just grabbed it for some reason. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave this reading here. That feels weird. It feels a little unsettled. But again, we don't all have to believe in the same thing. And that's, in my opinion, that's one of the things, that's one of the skills I've developed since awakening is... Everybody is on their own journey. We all believe in different things. Just because you believe in one thing and I believe in another doesn't mean your thing is right and my thing is wrong or vice versa. Um, I used to be someone, I told you, who was very judgmental about religious people. Even when I started doing this and I would get decks that would talk about like God and things, I'd be like, I'd feel weird about it but now I know that we all have our own beliefs like I, I just, I'm not going to keep saying it I'm not going to keep repeating myself <laughs> but I just I couldn't I couldn't sit there and not say how I was feeling about some of those things it's just who I am it's my queen of swords my my authenticity came roaring out <laughs> anyway um so yeah I'm gonna leave it here because that's all I have for you today and it's dark so you can't even see me <laughs> or the cards but I will be here tomorrow with another reading when I have more time and let's look at the next chapter <laughs> I felt kind of like that was it was weird how I kept wondering why I was feeling such a block there so the next chapter is, if you ever feel lost, please remember you can make it home within your own heart. So there you go. So I'm going to go, my friends. I hope you have a wonderful night. Feel free to tell me what you're doing, how you're feeling. I'm sending you guys lots of love and light as always, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.